March 21, 2025. The Oval Office. President Trump stands beside a shadowy rendering of an aircraft that only a handful of people have ever seen. Boeing just won a $20 billion contract for America's first sixth-generation fighter. The Air Force is going to be awarding the contract for the next-generation air dominance platform to Boeing. The F-47 is real. It's in production right now, and it's set to dominate the skies by 2029. But here's what nobody's talking about. The Navy's FAXX was supposed to launch alongside it. Instead, it's been gutted, delayed, and left with just $76 million in funding, while the F-47 gets $3.4 billion. Two cutting-edge fighters, one industrial base, only one will survive, and the winner might not be what you expect. For decades, America's air superiority rested on two pillars, the Air Force and the Navy. The F-22 ruled the skies from land bases. The F-A-18 Super Hornet commanded the seas from carrier decks. Both services were supposed to replace these legends simultaneously with sixth-generation technology. But something happened between the drawing board and reality. The Pentagon made a choice, a strategic gamble that could define naval aviation for the next 50 years. And that choice has Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth, Navy admirals, and Congress locked in a battle that goes far beyond just aircraft. Main content. Let's start with what we know for certain. The F-47 isn't some concept on paper anymore. Boeing's already building the first prototype. Test flights have been happening in secret since 2020, at places like Area 51 and Edwards Air Force Base. Former Air Force Acquisition Chief Will Roper let it slip back in September 2020 that a demonstrator had already broken records, though he wouldn't say which company built it or what it accomplished. That mystery ended in March 2025, when Trump revealed Boeing's victory. The F-47 designation itself carries weight. It honors the P-47 Thunderbolt, the legendary World War II fighter that protected bomber formations over Europe. It also aligns symbolically with the 47th Presidency and marks the Air Force's founding year, 1947. Everything about this aircraft screams dominance. Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin called it the most advanced, lethal, and adaptable fighter ever developed. But here's where things get interesting. The F-47 was supposed to be a battle cruiser of the skies. Early concepts imagine an aircraft with extreme range, designed specifically for the vast distances of the Pacific theater. The goal was simple, counter China's anti-access area denial systems that push American tankers and support aircraft hundreds of miles away from combat zones. The F-47 needed to bridge that gap without refueling, penetrate advanced air defenses, and coordinate swarms of autonomous drones. What do you think about America building the world's first operational sixth-generation fighter? Let us know in the comments below. The reality check came when costs ballooned. Former Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall paused the entire program in May 2024, after estimates hit $300 million per aircraft. That's three times the cost of an F-35. For a service planning to buy 185 fighters, the math became terrifying. The Air Force went back to the drawing board, reevaluating everything from design requirements to engine specifications. China forced their hand. In December 2024, videos surfaced showing two mysterious aircraft flying over Chengdu. One looked like a ginkgo leaf with no vertical tail, significantly larger than its J-20 Escort. Analysts immediately labeled them sixth-generation prototypes, tentatively designated the J-36 and J-50. These weren't just mock-ups or concepts. They were flying, and they represented a direct challenge to American air superiority that couldn't be ignored. The Trump administration fast-tracked the F-47 in response. The pause ended. Boeing got the contract, and by September 2025, manufacturing of the first F-47 had begun with a target first flight in 2028. The Air Force now says it'll cost less than the F-22, though exact figures remain classified. General Alvin posted an infographic confirming the F-47 will have a combat radius exceeding 1,000 nautical miles, fly faster than Mach 2, and feature Stealth++ Plus Plus capabilities that surpass even the F-22's already impressive, low-observable design. But let's talk about what makes this fighter truly revolutionary. The F-47 isn't flying solo. 
It's designed to control multiple collaborative combat aircraft, or CCAs. Think of them as loyal wingman drones that haul missiles, conduct electronic warfare, and provide distributed sensing. Major General Joseph Kunkel explained that Increment 1 CCAs will serve as missile trucks, carrying air-to-air -air weapons for manned fighters. Increment 2 adds electronic attack, resilient sensing, and different weapons packages. A single F-47 could potentially coordinate four or more of these drones in real time, multiplying its combat effectiveness without increasing physical risk to pilots. The engine technology alone represents a generational leap. The Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program features variable cycle engines from GE Aerospace and Pratt and & Whitney. These engines can dynamically adjust airflow during flight through a third stream of cooled air. Open that third stream and fuel efficiency doubles, theoretically giving the F-47 twice the range of an F-22. Close it, and you get maximum thrust for speeds above Mach 2 in supercruise. It's the kind of flexibility that changes tactical options mid-mission. Here's the problem. Those engines are now two years behind schedule due to supply chain constraints. The Air Force expects them ready by 2030, which creates pressure on the entire program timeline. Every delay ripples through development, testing, and operational deployment. And this brings us to the Navy's dilemma. While the Air Force celebrates its F-47 victory, the Navy sits in a very different position. And this is where the story takes an unexpected turn that could reshape American carrier aviation forever. The FAXX program has existed longer than most people realize. The Navy issued a formal request for information back in April 2012. They needed a multi-role strike fighter to replace the FA-18EF Super Hornet and EA-18G Growler by the 2030s. Unlike the Air Force's pure air superiority focus, the Navy wanted a strike fighter that could attack surface targets while maintaining secondary air-to-air -air capability. Range was critical. Operating from carriers means you're already 100 to 200 miles from hostile shores. Add sophisticated enemy air defenses, and you need an aircraft that can reach deep inland without constantly refueling. The Navy initially planned for a 25% range increase over current fighters. An F-35C has better range than the Super Hornet, so a 25% boost would put FAXX around 850 nautical miles of combat radius. Good, but not revolutionary. Still, the program moved forward with Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman all competing for the contract. Then March 2025 happened. Lockheed Martin got eliminated. Their proposal didn't meet the Navy's requirements, though specific details remain classified. That left Boeing and Northrop Grumman fighting for a contract that everyone assumed would be awarded by the end of the month. Except it wasn't. Funding disputes erupted. Pentagon officials raised concerns about industrial base capacity. And suddenly, the FAXX found itself in limbo. The 2026 fiscal year budget request told the brutal truth. The Navy asked for just $76 million for FAXX. Compare that to $3.4 billion for the F-47. The message couldn't be clearer. A senior military official stated it bluntly during a June budget briefing. We made a strategic decision to go all in on F-47 due to our belief that the industrial base can only handle going fast on one program at this time. Before we go further into what this means for America's naval power, take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing, and it costs you nothing but makes a huge difference in helping us bring you more content like this. Now let's talk about why this decision has the Navy fighting back. Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Darrell Cottle made his position crystal clear at the Reagan National Defense Forum in December 2025. He wants the FAXX decision made quickly. His reasoning cuts straight to operational reality. In no world should what flies off a carrier not be the highest end platform possible to penetrate deep into a weapon engagement zone and have confidence with longer range munitions that it can close the kill chain. The Admiral's frustration is understandable. Super Hornets are already stretching their 9,000 hour service life limits. By the early 2030s, the Navy faces a capability gap that buying more F-35Cs won't entirely fill. The F-35C is an outstanding aircraft, but it's not optimized for the long-range strike missions the Navy envisions. It's also not designed to control multiple unmanned systems the way sixth-generation fighters are. Congress sided with the Navy, 
Representative Rob Whitman from Virginia, put it bluntly at the same forum. We need FAXEC. By any measure, we need it. Congress has made the decision. Congress has done the direction, done the authorization, put in the dollars. The House version of the 2026 Defense Appropriations Bill included $972 million for FAXEC. Reconciliation funding added another $750 million. The Senate version pushed $1.4 billion. House appropriators even wrote explicitly that the Air Force's F-47 program is not interchangeable with Navy's carrier-capable program, and warned that failure to pursue Navy's FAXX program risks leaving the U.S. dangerously outmatched in a high-end conflict. But Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth holds firm. In a November letter to lawmakers, he stressed that the Pentagon strongly supports reevaluating the FAXX program due to industrial base concerns of two sixth generation programs occurring simultaneously. The administration worries about repeating the F 35 experience, where trying to build one aircraft for three services created delays, cost overruns, and compromises that satisfied nobody perfectly. The industrial base argument has merit. Boeing's already managing the F 47 program the largest defense investment in the company's history. They built a $1.8 billion advanced production facility specifically for sixth-generation fighter development. Northrop Grumman dropped out of the Air Force NGAD competition to focus on the B-21 Raider and other priorities, adding FAXX to either company's workload while simultaneously developing F-47 strains, engineering talent, production capacity, and supply chains already stretched thin by the war in Ukraine and global component shortages. Here's the twist nobody saw coming. Boeing's FAXX proposal looks remarkably similar to their F-47 design. A rendering released at the Tailhook Symposium in August 2025 showed nearly identical features. Tailless configuration, possible canards, and a low observable shape optimized for stealth. Aviation analysts immediately noted the implications. If the designs share significant commonalities, Boeing could leverage F-47 development work to accelerate FAXX at lower cost. They wouldn't be building two entirely separate aircraft from scratch. But there is a catch. The FAXX needs carrier-specific modifications, reinforced landing gear for brutal carrier landings, folding wings to fit below deck, catapult launch compatibility, saltwater corrosion resistance, arresting hook systems. These aren't minor additions. They add weight, complexity, and design challenges that could compromise some of the F-47's performance advantages. The Navy version might use derivative engines rather than the cutting-edge variable cycle power plants going into the F-47. The Radome appears smaller in Boeing's rendering, suggesting different radar or sensor configurations. Chinese military experts noticed these details. Wang Yanan, chief editor of Beijing's Aerospace Knowledge magazine, analyzed the F-47 renderings and concluded it's not much larger than an F-22. He called it a tactical aircraft rather than a large multi-purpose platform like China's Ginkgo Leaf design. He also questioned Boeing's track record, noting the company hasn't won a major fighter program in decades. The F-15 and F-A-18 came from McDonnell Douglas after the merger. Boeing's X-32 lost to Lockheed's F-35. Recent issues with the 737 MAX and KC-46 tanker raised further doubts about Boeing leading a sixth-generation program. The criticism might be propaganda, but it highlights real risk. Boeing's betting everything on proving they can deliver. The first F-47 is already in production. Steve Parker, Boeing Defense's CEO, called the program transformational and said it's tracking well. He emphasized the maturity of Boeing's design and the pedigree from prototype testing. But words are cheap. Results matter. And the timeline is aggressive. First flight in 2028. Operational capability by 2029. Fielding in the early 2030s. So here's where we stand right now. The F-47 is moving full speed ahead with massive funding and presidential priority. The FAXX sits in bureaucratic purgatory with just $74 million compared to the F-47's $2.6 billion. That's a 35 to 1 funding ratio. It's not a pause, it's effectively shelving the program indefinitely. This creates three possible outcomes. First, the Navy eventually gets a separate FAXX, but that means waiting until mid-2030s when Super Hornets are already aging out. Second, 
the Navy buys a navalized F-47 variant. Boeing's already hinting at this with their similar design rendering. Lower risk, faster to field. But it means accepting Air Force compromises for carrier operations. Third, the Navy doubles down on unmanned systems. Maybe advanced CCAs alongside F-35Cs provide enough capability without a manned sixth-generation fighter. But Admiral Caudill keeps fighting for a reason. China's J-36 prototypes are flying right now with service entry predicted by 2030. Russia's developing the PAKDP interceptor. European allies are building their own sixth-generation fighters. The entire world is moving forward while the Navy waits. If America's carriers lose their technological edge, the foundation of naval power projection crumbles. Super Hornets are fourth-generation designs with limited stealth against modern air defenses. F-35Cs can't do everything. The Navy needs a strike fighter that penetrates contested airspace, coordinates unmanned systems, and survives next-generation threats. That was supposed to be Faye XX. The irony cuts deep. The Air Force is getting exactly what it needs while the Navy watches from the sidelines. And the decision isn't just about aircraft. It's about which service gets priority in an era of constrained budgets. Conclusion. So which? Fighter survives. Right now, the F-47 has won decisively. It's funded, building, and launching within four years. The f 8 xx exists only in documents and proposals. The Pentagon made its choice. But the Navy isn't giving up and Boeing's dual-use design might offer an unexpected compromise. The next air war will be won by whoever fields sixth-generation capability first and integrates it with unmanned systems fastest. Right now, that's the Air Force. Whether the Navy catches up will define carrier aviation for the next half century. Hit that like button and subscribe for more military analysis. The future of air superiority is being decided right now.